Ah, another patch, another opportunity for me to break the game on day one and make a whole lot of people really angry. I'll take it, let's go. This is my healer build for patch 1.6 with a first aid that does everything that a recovery link does, but does it much better and sits on a five to an 11 second cooldown, depending on the buffs and on how many people you heal with it. Sounds pretty strong, right? Well, it is strong enough to rank up from level one to level 40 in less stand without losing a single game. And with most games ending up in an extremely one-sided experience. That is pretty good for the team with a healer, but pretty shitty for the team without one. So I'm here to help you with that problem today. I'm going to show you the build that I'm using and what I believe to be the best possible healer build for PvP in patch 1.6. So let's begin. A lot of you watching this might have expected me to pick up the four-piece reclaimer gear set now that it revolves around the support station. As some of you may know, most of my healer builds in the past They've always focused for a big part on and around the support station, always trying to push the range of that thing primarily. But that's, that's actually something that I'm not doing in patch 1.6, and that sounds pretty ungrateful. They finally make a set around the support station, and then the guy that's been running with the support station since patch 1.3 is not gonna use it. But I have my reasons, and for those reasons, I am now running with a tactician build that revolves 100% around the first aid defibrillator. So, what, uh, what are those reasons that I have? Well, first up is that running with a reclaimer setup really puts a lot of eggs into one basket. I've talked about this before, uh, but the support station, it is not that hard to counter. And better players in PvP will naturally go for the support station and focus it down. They can either shoot at it or they can EMP it with a grenade or with a sticky flashbang. And although this was fine in patch 1.5, because the support station was uh, one of many tools that you had, with the Reclaimer in patch 1.6, this is not fine because your build will rely on this thing to have a high uptime to get value. And that is simply not going to happen versus better players no matter where you place it. The second reason I'm going for Tacticians is also because skill power scaling now scales linear up until 450,000 skill power. That's a very high ceiling, which means that up until that point, there is plenty of room for skills to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And both the Tacticians 3-piece and the 4-piece together can add up to 40% skill power, which really makes a big difference if your base skill power is high enough. Also, in patch 1.6, the first aid defibrillator has been changed up. As some of you may know, instead of all the healing output applied to the player being instant, uh, the healing amount that this skill provides is now divided in two parts. The first part is still that burst heal, as we're all used to, but the second part is actually a heal over time that lasts 10 seconds. This means that if you, for example, see that the defibrillator heals your teammate for 300,000 HP, that means it heals them for 150,000 HP instantly and then an additional 15,000 HP every second for 10 seconds after that. Many of the players are calling this a nerf because of course you're not getting all the healing instantly, but I believe that this is actually a pretty significant buff because now you can have burst healing and healing over time on the very same tool, which pretty much tells me that there is never a single reason not to play with a defibrillator as your skill of choice when you're playing a healer. You see, in the past, it wouldn't really make sense to buff up your first aid skill as much because you wouldn't be able to use that potential healing anyway because the first aid at some point would be wasted because it would heal for much more than what your HP would be. But now, even if your heal is stronger than the maximum amount of HP that you have or that your allies have for that matter, it doesn't matter, because for the 10 seconds after you apply the first aid, they will still get an additional healing over time, which means that they can go in, they can take damage, they can trade with other players, and still receive healing in the meantime. Now that is a very, very powerful thing. So the goal here for the healer is to make that defibrillator as strong as possible. Make sure that when you shoot it at someone, it heals them up from zero HP to a full overheal, and then make sure that for the next 10 seconds after that, the healing over time amount is high enough that even if they take damage, even if they're trading with other players, they will not die. Then the second step that you want to achieve as a healer is to reduce the cooldown of the defibrillator to underneath 10 seconds so that basically you can create a whole circle of a burst heal, then healing over time, and then a burst heal, and then a healing over time every time before the latter one has expired. And this essentially creates an endless cycle of health regeneration that unlike the support station, which as I said can be shut down or EMP'd, cannot be countered, unless of course you actually kill the healer, then that circle is broken. But that's really hard to do as you'll see in a couple of minutes. So that's basically the whole ID behind it. Now the question is, how is this done? That's a good question because this is a build guide. So here is when I'm going to show you what I rolled. 
I'm running, as you might have already seen, with a four-piece tacticians with an inventive backpack and a vigorous chest piece. Now, many of you might jump at the screen right now with the question, Marco, why vigorous and why inventive? Why not rapid and specialized instead like you did in patch 1.5? So let me explain that. Um, inventive is a talent that is only active when the player is at full health. It gives you 15% extra skill power, which isn't all that bad, especially not when your base skill power is quite high to begin with. But of course, you lose the buff as soon as you get shot at, so it doesn't seem that strong. Or does it? You see, Vigorous works with the support station again in patch 1.6. And even though our build does not revolve around the support station anymore, we're still going to want to run with a small immunizer box as our second skill, basically so we cannot get EMP'd or something like that. And it's still very useful, I mean you can double tap the support station or throw it onto the floor for a quick cleanse. Or you can just manually blow it up for even more healing. But maybe what's even more important with the support station is that with this station and together with the first aid defibrillator, I can sit on a full overheal pretty much 98% of the time, even if I'm getting shot at. You see, the healing over time effect from my defibrillator refreshes my overheal every second after the initial burst. And the support station is also going to overheal me, which means that as long as I have some sort of heal on me, I will keep my overheal permanently. It's not going to be drained. This not only means that my health bar is pretty much extended by 50%, making me much tankier than the 300k toughness that I have on my inventory screen, but it also creates some sort of buffer zone for the inventive to be active, because now I can actually take a good amount of damage before the inventive buff is removed. So these two high-end talents essentially give me 50% more toughness and 15% more skill power. And frankly, I don't see any other high-end items in the game beating that value, apart from maybe a refresh mask for the solo players. The items that I have are rolled pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to my best in slot guide. I've got electronics as a main set on every single item, and every single mod, apart from one, which is just to give me a little bit of firearms to unlock the talents on my weapons, which we'll get to soon. But just to give you a quick overview, I have health, skill ace and ammo capacity on the chest piece. I've got skill power and burn resistance on the mask. I have health, bleed resistance, disrupt resistance and burn resistance on the knee pads. And this is actually one of the things that I'd like to change. Um, I ideally wish I could swap the bleed resistance for the shock resistance. That would be more useful as the bleed doesn't really do a whole lot in 1.6 anyway. But uh, yeah, RNG just hasn't blessed me with those ones yet. The backpack has health and ammo capacity. Again, uh, if it's possible, I'd like to swap ammo capacity for burn resistance at one point. But uh, I guess that ammo is fine for now as well. The gloves have assault rifle damage, health on kill and skill haste. And the holster also has skill haste. The mods all have skill haste as well, apart from one of them, which has uh, health on it. That is simply because I was already at 50% skill haste, so there was no point adding another mod to that if it's not gonna make a difference. The performance mods are all first eight ally heal mods, again going by that idea of boosting up the defibrillator to the max. And this ally heal will boost both the burst heal and the healing over time amount, so definitely a good pickup for the build here as well. The weapon that I'm running with is uh, the Liberator. The Liberator is a pretty good named weapon because the special talent that comes with it, the one that gives extra headshot damage to the pistol, does not replace the free talent. And that pretty much makes the Liberator always the best choice if you want to run with an M4 or an LVOAC assault rifle type weapon. There's just no reason not to take it. Uh, the three talents that I have on it are competent, talented and fierce. If possible, I'd like to replace Fierce with Skilled, as that's going to be a lot more useful for a support build. But again, I really need to be lucky enough to find one of those in the future. So for the time being, I decided to run with a secondary gun that has Skilled on it instead and just swap those out whenever I see the opportunity. The skills, well, uh, we kind of already went over those, but it's the Defibrillator, the Immunizer and the Recovery Link. And now for the talents, we have Adrenaline, Triage, Combat Medic and Death by Proxy. Triage, I guess you're all pretty familiar with. It reduces skill cooldowns by 15% if you heal a teammate with your skills, which for a healer is pretty essential to have because you will always heal a teammate with your heals, basically granting you a flat 15% cooldown reduction as a base, which can actually go all the way up to 45% if you heal all three of your teammates. And I'm also pretty sure that you're all familiar with the second talent, Combat Medic, as that has been a must-have talent since the launch of this game. Combat Medic allows you to pop a medkit and heal all your teammates for 40% of their health, meaning that if four players of the same squad space out their medkits correctly, the whole team will be healed for 40% of their health 
every three seconds, giving an insane amount of extra sustain to everybody in the squad. And in addition to that, it can also be used to save teammates that make a mistake. Say that someone is shocked or in a bad spot, he is on 10% of his health, about to die, can't do anything. But then two of his teammates pop a medkit and that person is now back to full health without having to do anything. I'm pretty sure that you can see the value in that. Adrenaline is also a pretty good talent for the healer because this will turn all my medkits into healing over time medkits, which is gonna do two things for me. Uh, first, I can pop the medkit the moment that I lose even a little bit of health, as opposed to popping it in the last seconds for critical save, which is much more risky when you're playing at low toughness. But this is also going to allow me to use a medkit to save a teammate with a combat medic, and then still get potential value out of it if an enemy decides to shoot me after that. Because the healing over time with adrenaline, it continues even if you're getting shot at. That by proxy gives me 20% more skill power when I destroy an enemy skill, which works really well with the talented talent that I have on my gun. These two combined basically give me 35% more skill power every time that I blow up a turret or a seeker mine or a support station or whatever, which in combination with the stacks from Tactician and Inventive, it can lead to some pretty ridiculous healing numbers. Surely, all of the buffs will not be active at the same time. In a real scenario, you will always have at least a few on and a few disabled at a time. And you're also not going to have all your tactician stacks available to you. But when you juggle these around, let's say you have talented and dead by proxy one time, and then you have the tactician stacks, and then you have the inventive, you're really going to notice the difference in the strength of your heal without these buffs. And also, don't forget that with this amount of skill power, we surpassed the soft cap quite a while ago, so losing 20 or even 30 30% skill power from inactive buffs will not result in that much of a difference. The bottom line is, is that heals are always going to be around 500,000 worth of ally heal, which is 250,000 burst heal and then 25,000 health a second for 10 seconds after that. Now, this sounds pretty powerful, and as I said at the beginning of the video, it is, but where this build truly gets disgustingly good, pretty much to the point of game breaking, is in Last Stand. It's pretty ironic that Last Stand is supposed to have normalized PvP, but this build is even better there. You see, in Last Stand, players have access to infinite consumables. Players get a full restock of every single consumable when they die. This is something that I suggested to be removed from Last Stand on the PTS, but hey, they're still there, and now we're gonna combine them with this build. There's one thing that you really have to keep in mind though, and that is that the soda works in mysterious ways. It says that you get 30% more cooldown reduction, but the moment that you pop it, for some reason, your skill haste is increased by 43%. Don't ask why, I really don't know. I know that it worked this way in patch 1.5, and it was fine there, because no one ever spec into skill haste anyway, so it would actually have a significant effect. But now, in patch 1.6, with our healer build, we're already sitting on the skill haste cap. So, popping this mid-fight will actually do nothing for us and will be a big waste. I didn't really think about this or know about this until yesterday, so over the past few days, I've been wasting all my cooldowns on sodas in last end, which is definitely something that you want to avoid. Anyway, instead of using the soda after knowing this, I jump towards using the canned food, which is actually really powerful as well, because it increases healing received by 40%. This is the thing that the whole team consumes just before a big fight, and it turns that 500,000 heal into a 700,000 heal. Which means it burst heals for 350,000, and then heals over time for that same amount again over 10 seconds. These healing numbers are literally through the roof. It means that players in my squad on average will heal more HP every single second than someone else is able to heal himself by activating his first aid. And that's only with one defibrillator. The medkits are of course also affected by this 40% increased healing, meaning that combat medic becomes an even more powerful tool to use as well, healing teammates for 56% of their health instead of 40. So yeah, I'd say that the rules of last stand are pretty simple. Kill everything you see because the enemies don't have enough damage to kill you, unless someone has dead eye. If you see dead eye, then run. Run very fast and pray to god that that person is busy licking up the salt from the 10 other players that he just followed over 10 seconds before. Now I do have a couple more tips for you, with the first one being is to have every single one of your teammates also run with a Vigorous themselves, so that when they receive healing from your heals, uh, it essentially also fully overheals them, giving them 50% more effective health and making them a lot more tanky. It can be a bit of a pain to set up if you don't have a pre-made team, but this is going to make the build even that much better. Uh, I'd say that this is literally a golden tip, because, you know, the Vigorous Chest is a gold item, that's why it's a golden tip. If you want to go super tryhard, you can also change the name of all your squad members to something super stupid and equip all of the same type of clothing. 
Uh, my team went with all barcodes and white outfits and because the game still doesn't have a way for other players to tell what type of build you're running, the only way that players are actually realistically going to be able to focus the healer is by memorizing who is the healer and by memorizing his name and how his character looks. And if everybody shows up with near identical names and characters, then this is going to be, well, pretty much impossible to do, which gives you an even greater advantage. And then last, last, last up, I also quickly want to mention the fact that sidestepping or strafing is unfortunately still in the game and it works even better in patch 1.6. Don't ask me why, it just does. This allows players with a more squishy build, such as the one that I have, to survive versus things that I should not be able to survive, such as a 7k firearms player running up to me in the open with a tech link and trying to burst me down. And then he isn't even getting close to killing me. I've talked about this many many times and I've asked many times for this feature to be removed, but it is patch 1.6 now, it is still in the game, so at this point, honestly, it's either learn to do it or get folded by it. I've left a video in the description box down below with a tutorial on how to do this on PC. This is something that I created for Massive all the way back in December last year so they could remove it. But, well, again, they haven't removed it yet. So now I want to give everybody the same opportunity to master it so that we can all get on an even playing field. And that, that's going to be all for this video. With this build, you're going to have a heal that burst heals and heals over time for a lot more than a recovery link. You're going to have a heal that is able to instantly revive players, which is also pretty underrated, by the way, but really good because the manual revive time has been increased to five seconds. And you have all of this on a 5 to 11 second cooldown, again, all depending on the conditions of the player and the amount of boosts and buffs that he has stacked. That's going to be all for today. If you have any questions left about any specific things, you can leave them in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. And as always, I will see you guys later. Or, like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.